You want him to leave. I, want him to leave. <laughs> I know, man. All right, all right, all right. Sorry. All right, come on. All right. That's a damn dime, though, in Saquon. We'll see. We'll see. Don't congratulate me yet. Okay. All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome in episode 24 of the Model Mindset. I am John, as always, joined by my boy BG. BG, what's going on, my guy? Hey, living the dream, my friend. Living the dream. Living the dream. Listen, guys, we have a little different of an episode today. So, you know, we try to switch it up, keep it fresh, keep topics fresh and relevant. Um, we, we kind of were running through some topics and, and we found one we really liked, and that was regret. Um, everyone has regrets in their lives. It's a matter of how, you know, they face them and how they use them to move forward instead of look back and so on and so forth. But, you know, in our conversations, in our prep, we were kind of like, you know what, what if we kind of just had almost like a Q and A between the two of us about regret? You know, because it's a personal conversation. A lot of it is is based on the person themselves. So we figured, why not kind of switch up the mold a little bit, have a little different of a uh, conversation today. So uh, this episode is going to be a little different. Uh, I think you guys will like it, though. So um, we got some cool questions we kind of made up for one another. Um, and we'll kind of see where we land on regret, because I think we might have some different perspectives on some things. But uh, overall, I think uh, the messages are going to be you know, just as strong as they would be if we were kind of giving you guys the normal facts and backgrounds on, on some topics. So uh, we hope you guys enjoy this one. But today's episode on regret um, is going to be something that you guys haven't heard from us yet. So how are you feeling about it, BG? You feeling good? I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, and the reason too, why I'm excited about regret is because if, if you'd asked me, hey, do you have a lot of regrets in your life? I probably would have responded no off yeah. the bat. But because... I reflected on my life mm -hmm. because of our topic, you know, because we do a lot of preparation for these podcasts. Right, right. I was able to realize that I did have a lot of regrets, <laughs> you know? So it's, but it's good to kind of um, revisit them yeah. and understand where I learned from them or where mm -hmm. I learned from them. Um, right. And if I, what I did to get past that. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. So my so when you hear the word regret, mm. what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Question one off the jump, huh? All right, that's right, baby. All right, man. First thing that comes to mind when I hear regret, um, it would probably be the severity of the word. You know, I think people hear the word regret, and and it's kind of it's an intimidating word, right? And it makes it's powerful, you, it's powerful, and it and it immediately makes you feel like you made a mistake somewhere, right? So that's kind of yeah. where my mind went, and I was like, all right, so where did I misstep, you know, in my life, right? Yeah. Where did I make a wrong turn or something like that? Um, so that's kind of my first thought when I hear the word regret. Um, and, and the first thing that came to mind now is, you know, because what you and I talk about on the reg is how to kind of move forward, right? How we're yeah. progressing, the way we move um, to accomplish the things we're trying to accomplish. And so the first thing that came to mind for me personally when we talked about it was, how I feel like I've, I'm 33, right? I'm young. I understand that I'm young, but your boy's got a few gray hairs coming in now, man. And I'm like, all right, I know, right? I already lost all my hair. I can have gray hair too. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm having the feeling of like, I wasted too much time in the last five, 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of great things personally in my, you know, my personal life, you know, started a family and all these great things, but it's like professionally, I feel like I've wasted a lot of time and that's where a lot of my regret comes in. I feel like I'm just not, I didn't grow at the rate I could have. And, and I feel like that even though I'm only 33 and we are, we are well ahead of the game compared to some, um, I feel like I'm behind the eight ball in a sense. You know, it's interesting you say that uh, because if I look at Brian maybe from five years ago, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he would have been ready for this. Like, I don't, I don't know if he would have been ready. And that's that's so a good point too. You know, it's it's almost like it. We changed our mindset instantly. Yeah. Because we were not only just ready, mm -hmm. but because our why grew and we needed. The change. Yeah. It came down to like, I have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. 
before, I don't think I was in that state of mind. I don't think I was ready for that type of um, it's not growth, but I don't think I was ready for that type of commitment, I guess. Yeah, that's, and you know, that's a good word to use. That is a good word to use because it is a commitment. Like yeah. what, you know, when you make that change and to have, you know, a change in your life and, and you know, achieve that growth mindset mentality, right? It's a commitment. Yeah. We think about this shit every minute of our day. Like no joke, yeah. guys. Like this morning, to give you a quick example, it was my alarm goes off at five every morning. So my, my, my band starts vibrating. I know it's time to get up. I had the past two nights, not been sleeping the greatest. Don't know why haven't been sleeping the greatest. And I was just tired. And, but the first thing I thought of was if I don't get up now, I'm going to be behind all day long because I have to get these things done today. I already knew what I wanted to get done today. So I knew I was going to be behind the eight ball. So the second I woke up, I was reminded of my commitment. And, and, and it's going to go to the minute I go to bed tonight. So commitment's big. Um, it's probably the, one of the biggest probably contributing factors in what we're doing now in our lives. But, you know, that's a, it's, just a, it's a funny th thing you said that, man. It's, it, would I have been ready five years ago? I don't know. I know. You know, it's I don't know. Big, yeah. Like, was your need to change that big? I, I don't, I don't, yeah. if I look five years ago, I, I don't think so. Yeah, the need to change, I would say no, probably not. You're right. Right. You're right. Right. Because because I think my priority. Because I mean, think about it too. For me, none of my boys would have been would have been born yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I would have just been married. Yeah. And so I probably my priorities would have been more of myself, probably in Val, not necessarily thinking about being the one in my family that yeah. could impact generations. Right. You know? Yeah. Being the one. Yeah, and by that. That's right. All right, so that rolls good into what I'm going to ask you then, man. And my first question. All right. All, all right. right. So what are the things you do now to make sure you don't have any regrets moving forward? Man, that's a good question. Uh, I would say, so, so I would say my awareness is huge. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by that is when we will have either – unfavorable conversations or conflict mm -hmm. we tend to react emotionally yeah where we could end up regretting what we said and awareness is like one of my key terms i always say awareness because i think being aware of yourself of your emotions of your actions of your mood i think is very important so i'm very in tune with my emotions so that i can um, understand their perspective, right, and also why I feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Journaling has been huge for me with that. You know, I've always talked about journaling. Yeah, you're a so big guy. Journal, journaling, yeah. yeah, journaling allows me to express all my emotions, mm -hmm. all my emotions, and then I can dictate it. Okay, what is their intention? Did they? Did they even know? that I'm feeling this way, do they, and a lot of times when I'm able to shift my way of thinking from their point of view, it's, it's huge. And it instantly can change my mood, can change my emotions. Right. And then I'm able to read it all, which has been huge for me. And, mm -hmm. and I think that has been instrumental uh, with not having regrets because that also allows me to communicate openly yeah. with my wife. You know, mm -hmm. like I talked about it before with Theo. Um, I feel like my relationships with my friends have deepened because yeah. I'm more in tune with my emotions. Right. Um, I would say the other thing that I have done to make sure that I don't have any regrets, and I think you would echo the same sentiments, is I'm not letting fear dictate whether or not I take action. And that has been freeing. You know, I mean, a, a good example is this morning when you asked me, I don't even know if you asked me, but you said, hey, I'm going to throw up something that if anybody wants to put International Women's Day, they could, and, I, and I, because there was a little bit of fear, and I said, well, what if we don't get anybody that submits anything to us? Right. And you're like, so what? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I said, you're right. 
Yeah. Yeah, take bold moves. Can't be fearful. Right. And that's what it is. Yeah. Like, and yeah. And, and to, for what exactly that it was, it was, you know, what if we don't get anybody who, who, you know, sends anything in and I said, well, what if we do, right. you know? Right. And, and you know what, man, it's like a, it's like a switch that gets hit sometimes where like you get struck by fear. Right. And it could be okay. big or small. This is the small thing, right? Something on social media is a small thing, but it's a fear based thing that we still have to work past. And, but like in our situation, man, you, you and I have a great relationship. Right. We hold you, you know, we talk every day, all day. <laughs> we we'll hold each other accountable, but we also pick each other up when we see each other going down that path a little bit, maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when one we of us has each the, other, exactly. One of us has the fear mentality. The other person has the fuck it mentality yeah. and we need that. Right. So, um, That's huge. I'm glad you said that. It, Cause you're right. It's, it, it, but it's, it's so true. Right. And so yeah. we, like, you keep me from having regrets by doing the things you said, because I'm on par with everything you talked about. 100% agree with everything you're saying. Right. Um, and, and vice versa. So, you know, those, those things are, are crucial the relationships right are yeah. crucial because sometimes you can't control certain things and you're going to let yourself go down that road and then you're going to have those regrets but if you got people yeah. to rein you in and you got people yeah. to hold you accountable and and say nah man fuck it yeah <laughs> then then yeah. You're, and you're in a good spot you know what i mean but your your ability to control your emotions but also voice them is special yeah and, and you know it, it, you and I both know this. It's not easy. That is no. not easy. No. I mean, remember when we first started this journey? Mm -hmm. I remember, like I was, I still kept a lot of stuff in, and I still do that from time to time. I mean, it's right. it's, a, it's a daily practice. Yeah. But when you can actually communicate how you're feeling mm -hmm. and not have any regrets of like, damn it, I wish I said this to my spouse, mm -hmm. or I wish I said this to my coworker or something, it's freeing when you can actually control your emotions, almost write out what you want to say, rationalize it, and then respectfully communicate how you feel. Right. So right. the other person doesn't get defensive. Right. It's fucking you don't, amazing. You don't got to have those shower arguments with yourself, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, two hours after a fight saying, I That's just said I'm this, saying. you know, exactly. There, you know what I mean? It. We all do it. Yeah, right. We all exactly. Do it. Like you're all, yeah. you're, we all sit there and say, oh, I should have said that. Or, or you're yeah. planning ahead. Like, well, if they say this, I'm going to say that. Right. Like, no, just, just yeah. fucking talk to each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so they can't read your mind. No, nope. right. we're not mind readers. So right. just talk. Exactly. It's freeing. Yeah, it is. And it, it prevents a lot of regret. That's for goddamn sure. You are spot on my friend. Yeah, no doubt, bro. All right, what All right. what's next for me? What do this we got? Is, I mean, this is this is great. I'm fucking excited right now. Okay, so <laughs> Dan Pink is the mm -hmm. author of The Power of Regret. Okay. And in that book, he has a quote where he says, if we know what we truly regret, we know what we truly value. Is there something you regret that you now truly value? Yeah, um, being around my family. Um, I, you know, I think it's easy to take it for granted, especially when you're growing up and you're still kind of young as a natural introvert, the older I got, the more like distant I may have, you know, gotten it maybe still can be sometimes right. Uh, just how I am. Um, but going through the process of losing my dad and stuff like, man, now I would like, I'd kill to have him back because it's like, I lost a friend. Like I was losing a friend at that stage of my life. You know, I yeah. lost my dad, but I lost a friend. Yeah. So like now it's like I I very much look forward to when I'm seeing my family and when I'm seeing the people close to me. So, you know, I regret so it's almost like you cherish that. I do. And I and I regret the times that that I didn't text my dad and be like, Hey man, let's go let's go get a quick nine in. You know what I mean? Hey, mm -hmm. let's shoot down to the pond for a little while. You know what I mean? Like whatever it may be, or just enjoy the simple conversations at Sunday dinner or like, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, when they're gone, they're gone. Right. We all know that. And and not to make it a sad thing. Cause you know, these are, these are the lessons that, that I, I, I have to take and cherish the lesson, right? I can't be sad about it. I got to cherish the lesson now. And the lesson is 
to appreciate the people in your lives and, and the people who are close to you and your family. So, man, that, that's that's probably what it is. I, I regret not being pro, more proactive with um, with time with the people I really care about and the family and taking maybe a weird kind of pride in being an introvert. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it's kind of like I, I enjoyed it almost. Um, not that I was a hermit and you never saw me, but <laughs> I, I was okay with like just – doing my own thing. Yeah. And so uh, you, you enjoyed that time. I did. And I still do. Don't get me wrong. I still yeah. do. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm much more, I'm much more excited now to, yeah. to see people and do things with the people I love um, and, and try to make a little bit more of an effort to do those things. Right. So um, I just wish I did it more. And, and now I know that I should, and I try to make an effort to do those things or just to kind of talk to people more often about stuff like that. Yeah, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, too. I mean, just from the conversations that we've had about, uh, you know, at men's groups, too, uh, yeah. about, like, uh, your dad and stuff, you know, it's it's rubbed off on me to where, you know, I want to be around my family more. You know, mm -hmm. I want to have – I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm present more. Yes. When I'm, when I'm yes. with them. Like, I almost can just take a step back and mm -hmm. soak in the time. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I do want to say thank you for that because I think you definitely have had an impact with that as well. That's cool, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, sure. All right, man. All right. Getting deep here now on a break. God damn, guys. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So th this, is, this is kind of a fun one, man, because um, when I was thinking about this, I was like, I oh, like this would be a cool question that I would want to answer. Um, what do you what is harder to deal with? Regretting things that you have done or regretting things that you haven't done? Uh, I would say since I see our growth and mm. I see, like, I can visualize what we're going to do. Like, I can oh, yeah. see, like, I can see it, mm. you know? So I wouldn't say I regret what I haven't done because I think we're on the trajectory of doing it. Right. But man, I, I would say, <sighs> you know, probably regretting things I've done, you know, in the past specifically where, you know, alcohol was involved. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think a lot, I mean, you probably too, but you probably can remember a time where I was completely shit faced and mm. probably made an ass out of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I don't share st like those stories often right. on the podcast. You right. know, I mean, um, some things are personal. Yeah. But I think it's also important to share that side of yourself too, uh, because it is, you know, the past, but I also want people to understand that, you know, I'm, I'm not bullshitting you. I, I definitely had a drinking issue, um, you know, especially when I was introduced to alcohol at a very young age, my freshman year. But one of the stories that continues to kind of come back in my mind, two stories in particular, one is when I was a senior in college and we were, we were pre-gaming at my buddy's place off campus. We were with my roommates who we all actually had a place off campus as well. And so we decided that we were going to stay the night at our buddy's place. Mm -hmm. And so before we went out and while we were pre-gaming, I called the couch and the heated blanket. Mm -hmm. So we walk to the bar, <laughs> we, we, you know, we stay there until the bar closes, we come back. I didn't get the fucking heated blanket and I didn't get the couch. So I was not happy, man. I was sleeping on the ground. <laughs> I was freezing. I was in a t-shirt. It was like the middle of winter. So I say to my buddy, I can drive. Now, it was his car. It was a purple Jeep Liberty. Mm. I say to my buddy Hutch, I said, I'll drive. Yeah. So he goes, okay, because we all wanted to go back to our house off campus. Yeah. Now, Sober Brian knows that I should have gone back roads. Drunk Brian went right down Main Street. I went right down Main Street. Yeah. And, yeah. and I ran a red light. Ran a red light. And as soon as I ran a red light, cop cars right behind me. Mm. 
literally comes to my window. He says license and doesn't even say registration. Just says get out of the car. Gets me out of the car. <clears throat> gives me a breathalyzer. I still remember all of this. Yeah. Gives me a breathalyzer, and I blow a point two eight four. And he's like, "You're driving a car at point two eight four, and instantly I go, "I'm sorry. I'm on the nickel soccer team. You know, I, I I've never been in trouble. You know, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry." He's like, "Can any of the guys in your car drive? Are they sober?" And I go, "No, they're not." So they breathalyze all five guys. Like, yeah, I, I had that many people in the car too. Five yeah. people in the car. None of them. None of them. Uh, blue below the limit. So he comes over. Now at this point, I could kind of tell that he didn't want to give me a DUI. So he comes over to me and he's like, is there anybody that you can call that can come pick you guys up? So I call my buddy Foley and I say, Hey man, we're by Wong Walk. Yes. That's the name of the Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> Deadly mask. And I said, Hey, we're by this restaurant. I need you to come pick us up. And he goes, okay, I'll leave in five minutes. And I go, you can't be drunk though, man, because I'm with cops. And he's like, "Shit, I'm drunk and I'm and I'm high, so I can't go get you." So like, maybe we should stop? edit his name out. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, sorry. Edit his name. Out. <laughs> we'll block that out. We got it. Yeah. So, so I end up calling Chelsea. Chelsea comes and picks us up, and I reflect on that and I regret that because it could have ended up very differently. Yeah, I could have killed my friends. And myself, I could have killed others, yep. all because I didn't get the fucking heated blanket or the couch. But it's 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 the alcohol, yeah, that impacted me negatively. Impacted me, <laughs> and I know a lot of people that drink alcohol probably can relate to that type of story. Yeah. And another one, and I'm, this will be a real quick one, but this one this one was really impactful, and I actually really learned from this one that I carry today is uh, I crashed my dad's car when I was, uh, I want to say about 23. I came home from the bar and I was going to bring home my buddy. And I don't know why, but I I didn't want to drive my car. So I took my dad's car, which happened to be somewhat new. Mm -hmm. I literally didn't even get out of the neighborhood and I smashed right into a parked car. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep at the wheel, mm -hmm. but I smashed it really good. Mm -hmm. I came home, I wake up my dad and said, Dad, I'm sorry, I, I crashed your car. And he's like, No, oh, what do you mean, Brian? What do you mean? And like, you could just tell he was like, What do you mean? What's going on? I remember going in the car, he, he saw the damage from the car, he saw the damage from the neighbor's car. Mm -hmm. And I just remember. They're saying, God, Brian, you, now, I, now I have to, like, call the cops, you know? And I could tell I was putting him in such a, a, a tough position. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, fuck, man. So the cop comes, and she asked if I'd been drinking. I said I had two beers. She went to the neighbor's house. They didn't want to press charges. And what I regret is... First of all, I should have got behind the wheel, of course, but... Of course, right, yeah. I, I, it's very tough when you disappoint your parents. It's like a whole nother level. When they, You know when they said, I'm just very disappointed in you? Oh, man, that I'm hits disappointed. You. That hits you. That they hits you fucking, differently. They kept it in their back pocket, too. Yeah. They knew when to pull that shit out. Exactly, man. And now, my dad didn't say that, nor did my mom, but I felt it. Like, I yeah. felt it. So the next day, I was very, very quiet, very quiet, because I was disappointed in myself, too. Yeah. And so my dad comes over to me. At this point, later in the day, he had got a, a rental car. And so he said, you know, get dressed. We're going to go to the outlet mall in Lee Mass. Now, I know people probably are saying, what? Your dad took you to get, like, clothes or something? That wasn't the point. I don't even know if I got clothes, to be quite honest with you. I don't even think I got anything. The point was is that he wanted to talk to me. And I remember the conversation. And he said that cars can be fixed. People can't. Yeah. Anytime that you are drinking, you call me. You call me and I will come get you. Yeah. 
And I, and I took that. And I know that I'm going to use that with my boys. Now, it's going to be scary mm-hmm. to, you know, have to have that conversation with the boys, but we have to be right. very transparent about alcohol, especially knowing, like, what I went through, struggles that I've gone through. Right. But they need to understand that it doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter time of day, night. You call me. I will, I will get you anywhere you are. Do right. not get behind that wheel. Do not let your friends get behind that wheel. So I would say those are the two that, and of course there's more too, but those are the two that oh, yeah. really, you know, really, um, I reflect on and regret because yeah. there were poor decisions on yeah. my part that I could really, um, I, I might not be here today. If, exactly. If yeah. The, the, the whole scope you know? of your life could be different. Yeah. In every facet. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's wild, um, man. Kudos to you for sure. sharing that, though. Dude. I know it's not easy, so props to you, my Thank guy. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and you know, I, I hope that, um, I, and like I said before, I know a lot of people probably can um, resonate with those stories. We've all, there might be people that have drank and drive before, but mm-hmm. um, we have Uber now. So try to use Uber. That's right. All right. I'm a uh, happier note. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, are there any regrets in your life that has helped you with fatherhood? Ooh, help me with fatherhood. Man, okay. All right, so this is, I'll try, I'll try to tie this in here. Because um, it kind of, this is the first thing that came to my mind, put it that way. So, a lot, a lot of people don't know this, but about, it was during, I think it was during COVID. So maybe 2020. About it was almost about this time, actually, about in 2020, so about three years ago. My wife and I have always had the conversation of um, adoption, and we always talked about even before we had our own children about how one day we wanted to adopt, and that'd be something that we would that we would like to do, and we'd, we'd take a lot of pride in that, and it would you know, it was something that that down the road you know um, we would really be happy that we did that, and. Um, so in, in like 2020, it was, a, it was, I remember it was before Easter, uh, we were having a movie night um, with the girls. We were watching um, a Disney movie that just came out. And uh, I, was, I was on the couch, and I didn't say anything to Danny at the time, and I was just researching the process to adopt. And um, so long story short, you know, I brought up to her one day. We were out. We were doing some stuff for Easter. And uh, right away, she said, yeah, Absolutely. And I was surprised. At first, she thought we wanted to get another dog. She thought I was showing her adoption stuff for another dog. And I was like, no, no, this is for a person. Sure. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At that point, we did, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so it was just kind of like, you know, the, the wheels are moving, right? So fast forward now. Remember, that was like in April of 2020. Fast forward to, man, probably August. Or September, like early fall, maybe of of this past year in 2022, we still were not licensed, not due to any fault of our own. Okay, and this isn't it an indictment. that long. This, it's not. Yeah, it's just not an indictment on the process at all. I mean, it's a, it's a little it's a little flawed, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it per se, right? Yeah. But um, so that's that's maybe almost two and a half years, right? Mm-hmm. It was legit to the point we forgot we were in the process of it. Like we just took all the classes, all the certifications, all the stuff, did it all. And then when you get wow. to the point where you have to have to write a home study. So they come over and, and they, they talk to your kids, talk to you, talk to people in your life and stuff like that. And um so we went this whole process. And then in August, maybe September this past year, Danny and I are sitting down, having dinner outside with the girls. And she kind of broaches the subject of like where we're at in our life now. Cause it, and it was in that time frame because it was just after you and I got into this and I decided to get my certification in personal training and like all these things. So we had them in like September. And um, she's like, you know, we're, we're in a much different place in our life now. Like she was, she was starting to travel a lot for work. Her role was kind of evolving a little bit. You know, she kind of, you know, Get, getting a little more um, involved in a lot of things at work. And um, for the better, her career was just taken off, you know, still yeah. to this day, you know, uh, but she's just, she was thriving, 
Right. Yeah. And we, we and pretty much we had an agreement like you don't say no to going places like because kind of I would I thought she would regret it. To be honest yeah. with you. So it's yeah. like don't say no to places. Go everywhere they ask you to go. Like you're going to be visiting really great places. Go go go. Girls and I are fine when the time comes. Let's do traveling a lot. I'm starting this whole thing up um, with you. You know, the girls at this point are two, two and a half years older. You know, we, we, we rearranged the house for this to happen, like moved bedrooms, everything. And we were just waiting for months and months and months and months. And, um, and, and so it, we kind of like, everything was prepping for that for such a long time that I feel like we, we got lost in the moment in that time frame. Mm-hmm. And when we decided that, you know, it was a tough conversation too, because we both agreed, not, we did not disagree with each other, but it was kind of like where we're at now, this probably isn't the best time to like start this process. If we were in it and like finishing it and, and, you know, being in the process of having this child be our own, that's one thing, but we still have probably potentially two more years of going through courts and stuff to have this child potentially be our own. And the, like, it just wouldn't have been fair to the kid at this point, right? Yeah. So I, I kind of like to this day, I still think about it. Like I kind of feel guilty about it. Like should we just should we just have stuck it through? You know? Mm-hmm. No. But looking at it now, how busy we are, there's just there's no way. There's no way yeah. it would have been it wouldn't have been a good idea. Because then, if 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 you did actually adopt, yeah, and this didn't, it, j- it just evolved too much time, and yeah. you couldn't balance it. Yeah. Then you could have might have. You know, in Danny too, maybe she couldn't have traveled as much. Right. Then you both could have had some regrets, like, right, it's the best decision. Right. Like, you know, like, at, and we talked about it. We're like, we can't, we can't categorize that as being selfish. No. It's, it's really not. You know what I mean? But like, we can, we kind of struggle with that. You know, and I'm yeah. sure she still does too to this day. If I if yeah. I brought it up, I don't we, don't. we don't talk about it. Not because like we're trying to hide it or mask it. We kind of just like moved on from it and accepted it. But I feel like if we talked about it, it would kind of be like a, you know, something that maybe we kind of maybe carry a little guilt with. But, um, yeah, so I kind of I kind of regret that process of, like, maybe just being in that stalemate for so long that now, yeah. and you said it earlier, being present is such a big thing, man. Because, yeah. like, I realized how fast my girls went from two and four to four and six. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Like, that happened quick fast. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, I'm not wasting another second, like waiting for anything. Like I'm going to be yeah. here and now and just working towards what's next for us and them. Right. So, um, yeah, my regret, I kind of learned in that time frame was like, don't wait for nothing and don't let time kind of pass you by, like be there for everything, be present for everything and, and, and have it be all one thing moving forward. You know, and my personal belief too, is things happen for a reason. Yeah. And so I think things didn't align so quickly because it wasn't meant to happen. I mean, think about how much you have grown, Danny has grown Mm -hmm. individually, but then how you've grown together. Yeah. Like you guys have grown your family together. Like I'm sure you would agree that your family dynamic is much stronger now too. Oh my God. Because they have a better version of you. Mm -hmm. And we know Danny's doing her thing too and being very successful. And that's very admirable. Yep. So I think things happen for a reason because that I mean there could be something down the road where you know we're getting into youth athletics. Yep. There could be something where we impact a youth yeah. to where we, you know, you're not um, adopting per se, mm-hmm. but maybe you're mentoring. It's you know? a great point, man. That's a good point. He's kind of maybe filling that gap a little bit or filling that 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 maybe need or guilt factor, like kind of putting putting something in there. So that's actually a really good call, man. I never thought of it that way. Um, I know this isn't some like predetermined conversation we're having in front of a camera. This is like a legit conversation guys. So, um, no, I appreciate that, man, because I never thought of it that way. Um, and maybe it's why I'm so anxious to do this, right? Like, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's, maybe it's a contributing factor to me looking forward to working with like the youth athletics and stuff like that so much. And, um, you know, stuff like that. So that's a, that's a pretty good call out, dude. I appreciate that. You got it. All right. Are we, uh, all right. Let's, let's, I'll hit you with one more question here. I, I don't want to run too long. I don't think you do either. 
Are you um, doing the foundation uh, regret boldness one or? Yeah, yeah, we, we can we can slide that depending on okay. depending on maybe where we where we end up with here. But yeah, I'd like to still. Okay, I'll I'll try to like wrap it up like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. okay. All right, man. So I got let, let me get to my last one here then. Um, so we're big Mel Robbins fans. Um, she's she's awesome. If you guys listen to Mel Robbins, listen to Mel Robbins. I mean, she, she she's, she's just a dope. badass man. She really is. She's yeah. she's great. Um. So she has a cool quote that I saw actually. Again, when you when you prep for this stuff or you put your mind at a certain place for an extended period of time and you work on stuff, things just show up. It just tends to happen that way. So nevertheless, um, it happened again this week and a Mel Robbins quote came up uh, on my feed one day and it said, never regret the love you gave someone. They needed it. And I, and I kind of thought to myself for a minute and, and before I give what I thought about it, I'll ask you BG. So that quote, never forget, or I'm sorry, never regret the love you gave someone. They needed it. Do you, do you believe in that? Do you, do you think that's, that's true? Yeah, I do. Because in my opinion, it speaks volumes uh, to a person's character mm -hmm. when they can show love and grace during a person's dark moments. Yeah. You know, everybody has struggles, Yeah, you know, but when you can, show love during that time, during that person's struggles or dark moments that will impact that person's life. Yeah. And I think when you're able to bring positivity and, br and bring a consistent you, uh, to people, I mean, dude, that, that, that impacts people's lives. I mean, yeah, I, I can remember, um, when I first started working for Cigna about 12 years ago, there was this lady on our team that people warned me of said, Oh, she's so tough to work with. You're, she just has a terrible personality. Mm -hmm. Now I'm the type of person that I don't treat people differently. Mm -hmm. You what the brine you see here is the brine that everybody's going to get, which means positive attitude. And I'm going to ask you a ton of questions about yourself because I want to get. Them <laughs> and so the first interaction with her, that's what I did. I, I was asking questions about her because I genuinely wanted to get to know her. Right. And it was an amazing conversation. So we had a couple more meetings after that. I really enjoyed our conversations. And I remember like the third or fourth conversation we had, she goes, don't you know what people say about me? Don't you know they say that they're, that I'm tough to work with and that nobody likes me. And you know what I say to her? I said, I think you're awesome to work with. Mm -hmm. I think you're a pleasure to work with. And she was like, thank you. She came in to the office, maybe like two, three weeks later because she was work at home. She came up and she gave me a hug. <laughs> Everybody, all our coworkers saw this. Yeah. And they're like, well, how do you have such a good relationship with her? And you know, what I said, I got to know her. Yeah. No one got to know her. Right. And, and that's the thing is I showed her, that I genuinely cared about her. Mm -hmm. You can call it love. I was just being myself. Right. But I think people need that when you just need to be you and, right. and bring a good version of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because people struggle on a daily basis. So I a hundred percent agree with that quote. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our ups and downs in life as we all do. Yeah. But if you can not let someone else's bad day rub off on you, mm -hmm. that speaks volumes to your character. Right. So when I heard that, man, and that's great and that's admirable because, you know, my first thought was the opposite. If I'm being very honest with you, really? I, heard, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that quote or I read that quote and, and I and I immediately thought, well, if it if it says never regret the love you gave someone, it means you're not giving them the love anymore. And there's a reason for that. So my thought was it's I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't regret it. Right. But. <laughs> Um, but may, maybe a little bit though, maybe, maybe I would feel like I wasted time and energy and, and, and I'm not saying that in a sense of, you know, giving up on people and things like that. Right. My mind more so went to, you know, where, where I am and, uh, and where I'm at as a person, like, you know, a spade's a spade. And I heard this quote one time and I, and I love it and I believe in it. And I actually talked about it today actually with somebody. And the quote is, people tell you who they are, believe them. 
And it was, it's it pretty much, well, people will show you who, who they are and, and you can maybe try to convince yourself sometimes that they're not that person and they deserve the benefit of the doubt. And a lot of times that is true, but sometimes some people just aren't that great. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's kind of where my mind went. And so I'm like, let's just waste the energy. And I am not in the business of wasting energy anymore. I'm not in the business of, of spending time on people who don't deserve time. Um, and, an interesting perspective. It, you know what I mean? And that's where my mind went to start, right? And then, and then hearing that now, I'm thinking, well, am I being jaded? Am I, mm -hmm. being, am I being too short with people? Am I not giving enough yeah. leash to people? It, but yeah. in reality, I do. I, I, give, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm really right. not that hard to get along with. You know, I'm really no. not. Um, <laughs> but like I said, though, if, I, if, if, someone, if someone I see just isn't a good person, by maybe, maybe just some of the shit they say is just sideways. And I don't like yeah. it. Whether you make some kind of stupid sexist remark or racist remark that is not in a joking context, it's something that's actually part of your being. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, like I, I'm not here for that. You don't get anything yeah. from me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Right? But like, yeah. that that's where my mind was, and I'm like, all right, well, maybe you should be more patient with people. You know, after <laughs> after him with what you just said, I'm just knocking my phone over. I'm so I'm so excited right now. Um, you know. Maybe maybe I should be more patient with people or give people more benefit of the doubt, and, and maybe I'll get a hug in the office once in a while. I don't know, yeah. but uh. well, you know, it's, you know, it's interesting you say that or to see your perspective or to hear your perspective because yeah. when you say that, it makes me want to be more vocal when I hear someone being like that. Yeah, maybe being, um, you know. I don't want to say uh, negligent, but what, what's the word? Um, Not sure. What's the word? Um, I don't know. When a person's naive. being naive. Yeah, when a person's being naive and just not being nice or not being, like, just going against who you are. Yeah. Um, it, it, I feel like I am more um, confident in speaking up. Yeah. for myself and my beliefs now mm -hmm. um when before i may have silenced them you know that, and that's a good point that's that's actually a great yeah. point because maybe that's what i'm doing maybe i'm not yeah. you know because again i'm like ask you know whatever maybe it's not my business or not my place just keep my shut keep it moving and in your in your mind just dismiss it you know what i mean or dismiss yeah. them yeah. when in reality maybe i should do something like that right i should maybe voice something a little bit more often and maybe be proactive in that yeah. sense, right? That's a good. That's a good point too. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's who you are. You're very good at that. You're very good at at. Well, you're very approachable, but you're also you're a good listener. So like that balance is there where you you can say something and you can get those things off your chest and say those things that are proactive, but you'll also hear that point of view as well. Um, and that's a skill you have, and not everyone has that. So. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting that that we can read the same quote and maybe have a little different initial perspective. But I, I can see where you're coming from now, and yeah. maybe maybe I can do a better job at that for sure. No, that's great. I'm glad that's what makes this this specific podcast yeah, unique yeah. is because we're sharing two different perspectives on a couple right. a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, so listen, there was again, we wanted to have a cool Q and A. We hope you guys liked it. Um, we didn't want to go too long on it, but we did want to touch on one thing that we found interesting when we were kind of looking up regret. Um, you know, BG does a really good job explaining these things much better than I can. Um, so he's going to throw something at you guys real quick. Just kind of some food for thought to wrap this thing up. Um, to kind of let you guys chew and marinate on this bitch a little bit, uh, while you guys close out this episode. So BG, give him something real quick to kind of think about as we, uh, as we close out here. What was I supposed to say? Was I supposed to talk about the foundation regrets and the boldness regrets? If, if you want to. We don't have yeah. to. If you want to. Okay. No, no, I could. Uh, okay. Now I've got to figure out where I'm going with this. Okay. So <laughs> there, are, there are four types of regrets. There's a foundation regret, boldness regret, moral regrets, and connection regrets. Fuck. What's foundation regrets? Do you remember? Maybe we should just scratch it out. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, maybe just say. Uh, how do we want to wrap it up? 
<laughs> All right. Here. All right. All right. Real quick. If you want me to Google, I could Google it. I could Google it real quick. Foundation of it. I can, because it was from that dude. Dan Pink. Dan Pink. I like that name. Yeah. Of course, my fucking computer's gone slower than mail. I should use my fucking phone. What am I doing? You should use your phone. Now, do you think do you think it fits here, or do you think it's something we could put as a post in a story or something like that? I like that idea too. I'm just thinking, how do we want to end it, close it out? Because we just talked about that quote. Maybe we just wrap it up with, "All right, you know, hope everybody enjoyed our discussion Q and A yeah. on regret." Um, you know, so take some time to kind of reflect on maybe some regrets that you have in your life and see how you've learned from them. Right, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and kind of remember that, hey, yeah, I don't fucking know. Take action. I don't fucking know. Fucking Take action. <laughs> I don't fucking know. All right, hold on. Well, I, got, I got this. I got this. I got this. Are right, you ready? Yeah. All right. All right, guys. So we hope you enjoyed it here. We, we wanted to give you guys something a little different today, a little Q&A action. Um, we, we definitely... Um, have different viewpoints on a lot of things. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it's pretty clear that regret can have multiple avenues in your life. You can choose to, to view regret and have regret be a part of your life uh, in a way that you're learning things and you're accepting it and embracing it, or you're burying it and letting it affect who you are as a person. Okay. So I think our objective always is to move forward. That's what, you know, BG and I always preach is, is about, you know, things to, that we could do in our lives to move forward. Um, and regret is no different. Um, so our advice to you today, I think, is simply would be embrace it. Embrace your regrets, and, and, you know, and if if you have the ability to avoid them in the future, kind of how BG talked about before, I think that's fantastic. But there there's never a lesson in life that you shouldn't learn from. And that's what many of our regrets are. So. Uh, BG, anything else for, for the lovely people who listen in about regrets today? No, that was fucking gold. <laughs> Nailed it, huh? Nailed it. On one, Nailed on one it. shot. <laughs> All right. Good. All right, guys. We appreciate you joining in. Um, we will catch you guys next week. All new episode dropping Monday per usual. Have a great week, guys.